Hi everyone and welcome to the Floss Marketing School. Today we are going to study what is the e-commerce tracking code for Matomo Analytics and we will do like a demo use case example in order for you to really understand how this uh, given specific tracking code is working. So let's get started. Okay, so here you are in Matomo Analytics. So the first things to know about it, about the e-commerce tracking code, is that in order to have this feature, you need to activate it, right? What you can see here is the e-commerce category, and that's something that you activate when you click here on the gear setting icon. And when you go at the level of your given, let's say, website, I'm not going to call it a property, but let's say website, you can activate it by just going over here and say, okay, this is an e-commerce website, right? So the fact that you just say, okay, I'm an e-commerce, I'm not an e-commerce website is the thing which is defining if you're going to have an e-commerce or not, right? So if I go over here and that I look at the category, we see that it's not appearing anymore because I just disable it. And if I go back over here and I say, hey, my website, is an e-commerce one and I just go over here and I say e-commerce enabled then I will be happy because I will see it back okay so that's uh, in order to activate let's say e-commerce but the bad news for you is that this is not enough in order to track e-commerce within Matomo Analytics. And the reason is that actually there are many different website technologies which are tracking e-commerce order and Matomo cannot guess actually where uh, those data dealing with, let's say the e-commerce order are located on uh, your pages or let's say on your website in general. Okay, So if you go on the doc slash e-commerce analytics, you will read uh, all the full documentation explaining you what is e-commerce about. And really the only thing that you should care about is really this tracking code, right? So this given tracking code, which probably uh, things, I mean, talk uh, to you like Greek here, is that uh, what we're gonna explain. So what you can see in this tracking code is that you have two features. One is the add e-commerce item and the other one is the pack push track uh, e-commerce order. So you need to have those two function in order to push data to Matomo, such as the data that we can see over here at right? e-commerce. And if you would like to get some data within it, like, yeps, let's go over here. Uh, if you like to get those data, like e-commerce and stuff over here, you need actually to add those given line of code, the one that we were seeing right now. Okay. So if you just uh, copy and paste this and that you insert it on your website, you will see that actually the data will be pushed straight away to Matomo. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm just going to go over here uh, with my tag manager. Probably all of you guys know what is the tag manager about. I'm just going to edit my tag and I'm just going to change uh, the current tag that I had, right? So this one, which was named e-commerce Matomo, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just going to copy and paste actually the script over here, right? What you can see is just the basic copy and paste that I just did. I'm just going to change one thing here. I'm just going to change the order ID because in fact in Matomo, you can uh, push this data only once. And if you refresh your page, it won't be sent back again. And just to show you that it works, I'm just going to change uh, not the SKU, but let's say the title of the product and say, hey guys, it works. Okay. Hey guys. Hey guys it works okay and then i'm going to decide actually to generate it at the page view level and i will go of course a bit more complicated later on okay so let's uh, let's imagine that now i'm going to publish it and i'm going to say go go and i publish it okay so right now it's on my website so if i go on my website oops i think i already gave a name which was go so let's go let's call it go one okay so now it's published and on my website which is not yet an e-commerce and this is something that i need to explain you okay so i have um um, local uh, WordPress website over here. And what I'm doing here in order to uh, make it as an e-commerce is that I activate a plugin which is named e uh, WooCommerce. And WooCommerce is a free plugin for WordPress which is gonna change uh, your website and make it as an e-commerce one, right? So what you need to understand is that in order to transform your WordPress into an e-commerce website and to have the possibility to have like a cart and stuff like this, uh, all you need to do is to download a plugin which is named WooCommerce and then WooCommerce is going to install uh, as well several um, other plugins, okay? But that's important because when you do so, then you will get those given plugins and thanks to those plugins, you can create some products. In my case, I just create one fake product for the sake of this given uh, tutorial and as you can see i have my whoops view product i have my uh, wordpress website which is now changed it to an e-commerce where i can play with the prices where i can play with the button and so on and so forth and that's so cool okay so that's uh, very interesting just to let you know that i didn't pick up uh, this example 
uh, about the WooCommerce like this. I mean, I just saw a video uh, some years ago uh, coming from Julian Juneman, MajorSchool.com, who did a great job and actually I inspired a lot this tutorial from what I saw over there. Okay, uh, so now in my specific case, I just visited some pages. So if my tracking code is working fine, normally I should see over here uh, some data which are pushed and let's say e-commerce in particular because the tracking code should have been fired for the given um, for the given order that I wanted. So in my case, if I look over here, I cannot see anything and that's um, that's unusual. And if I look here, I say, okay, there was some order which were made. So let's have a look at the visitor and visit logs and what happened. So it's saying ordered. What did I order? Oh, maybe because I previously came in the past. So let's have a look. Uh, do, 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 ordered. Kind of funny, right? To say order because I ordered this morning. Okay, that's great. So uh, it's not working. And as it's not working, I'm going to debug that. So in order to debug that, just do um, a right click and then inspect element. And if you look at the console, you will probably uh, learn about something. And here you can see that they are saying, oh, there is something wrong, right? You have like, uh, like uh, I don't know how to call that a bracket or something. Um, so if I look now at my uh, tags and I look at something which is going wrong over here. Okay. And what do I have wrong? So probably this is not good at all, right? And that's that's what I ate here. So I'm just gonna uh, remove that out and let's see if it's gonna work better now. Okay. Uh, and let's publish it again. So go to, go to. Okay, and now I'm publishing it. And now let's uh, have a look back actually at the page. Okay, and now we don't have any error anymore. So I guess that it has been properly sent. So yeah, just to let you know as well that uh, tracking e-commerce is a lot about debugging. So uh, feel free actually every time to check with Firebug if something bad is happening. And what you can see here is that I get my um, my product that I wanted. Hey guys, it works. So that, that's great. This is what I wanted. It was just in order for you to demystify what is the e-commerce tracking code and that you can easily push uh, data to, uh, to Matomo thanks to it. But as you can imagine, that's not perfect because in my case, I decided to send it uh, to every pages of my website. And that was the condition. And in my case, I want actually to be fired only on the page, which is named order received. Okay, that's why uh, I'm showing you this example right now. So I uh, will now change a little bit our tracking code. So if I go back over in tags uh, over here, I'm just gonna add this um, additional rule, which is oops, uh, only on the page, which is named page view, I'm going to do it like this, page view order received, and when it equals, in my case, when it contains order received, okay, so that's one condition. But then I'm going to have some additional condition because as you can see, all those data are hard-coded, okay, they're all hard-coded, and that's not cool for you because probably you know how to make a copy and paste, but you don't know how to send some dynamic values over here. And it's true that every time that you are reading a documentation such as this, and actually the one of Google Analytics is a bit the same, they are not explaining you how you can push some dynamic value over here because uh, you're products are going to change from time to time and uh, this is what we're going to see right now so just to let you know that in order to push data dynamically here there are many different ways that you can go for uh, you can use php you can use javascript you can even use uh, probably the http tracking api in my case i'm going to use the javascript one so that's probably one of the dirtiest way probably not something that you should uh, follow that's why i strongly recommend you to ask to a developer to implement this tracking code and in fact in most of the solution out there we use an integration or we use a plugin for example InnoCraft as a premium feature in order to automatically push those data uh, to uh, WooCommerce uh, instead of doing it manually but just for the sake of this example I'm going to do it manually okay and I'm going to use a technique which is a uh, kind of dirty which is called scrapping which means that I'm going to take the data out of the page and I'm going to push them to Matomo uh, the reason why it's dirty is that, as you can see, within this given tracking code, the information that you need uh, to send are, and which are required, that's what it's uh, written here, is the SKU, okay? 
And then you need as well to get, uh, so the price is recommended and you need as well to get the e-commerce order. So e-commerce order is kind of easy to get because as you can see, the e-commerce order is right here, right? That's the number 130 and that's something that we know how to pick up with a variable with uh, Matomo Tag Manager. But regarding the SKU, for example, it's not a data that we have up here. So in any cases, you will need to change, uh, let's say you're on your website a little bit in order to inject the SKU or you can use as well a lookup table within the Matomo Tag Manager in order to say, okay, every time that you get the, the name of this given product, I want you to send uh, the following SKU. So uh, we're going to do a bit of that right now. Uh, so let's let's go over here. Okay. Um, so we want sorry. So we want to get uh, the SKU and the SKU, as we can see, if I go back on my page over here, the SKU is no, I don't have the SKU. So the SKU that I'm going to send is the name of the product. So that's going to be yeah, that's going to be this one. Yeah, it's not perfect, but uh, okay. Anyway, I'm gonna just um, yeah, I'm gonna do this uh, in the second in the second part. I'm just gonna take the order uh, number. So, uh, if I inspect the element, as you can see, the order number is this value. So that's the one I want to pick up. So I'm gonna do like a copy and CSS selector. So now I just copy this given uh, value. And the reason why it's a dirty method is that of course your source code of your page can change from time to time. For example, if you uh, change your template, it's gonna break this given uh, variable. Okay, so here I want to get the uh, unique order ID. So I'm just gonna go over here. This is where I want the data to be sent. I'm gonna say, okay, I want to use uh, the CSS selector. So I'm gonna create a new variable. This variable is gonna be uh, what we said, so it's gonna be um, um, it's gonna be um, the order ID, so it's order ID, okay. And the CSS selector is the one that they just paste, okay. So here it's uh, pretty cool. Order ID always give name which are explicit. Here I'm always getting it wrong, either it's uh, within. Uh, bracket or not. I'm going to remove those brackets because I guess it will work without. Um, so here I guess that you understood what is the concept here. So I'm not going to detail it that much for the other value. Okay, I'm going to leave it as they are. I shouldn't, but uh, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that uh, just for the sake of this example. And here as well, uh, I'm going to leave the SKU like this, right? Uh, it's not good at all, but um, I mean, just for the sake of this example, if you understand what I'm doing here, you'll probably understand all the rest. Okay, uh, so now let's update. Let's update and let's publish. Okay, go for... The thing is I don't want to make a tutorial which is gonna uh, lens ages. Okay, and there we are. So now if I just... Uh, no, I'm just gonna go... Uh, Okay, anyway, I'm going to pass an order like this. You will see the full process. Okay, so here is my given page. So I'm going to add it to cart. Uh, by the way, as you can see, the SKU here, as I put it, because our WooCommerce has a feature in order to do that. So I could basically store it in a cookie and move in from uh, time to time, but I'm not going to do that. What I will love with uh, WooCommerce as well is that you can purchase with a check and you can purchase as well with uh, other methods, which means that you can easily go to the uh, checkout process without any difficulties. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, place an order and as you can see, oops, uh, yeah, okay, so great. So I get my order received and normally if I'm lucky enough, I should have used actually the uh, preview mode because it could be clearer. So if I use the preview mode, and I go over here, so, and I do this, oops, copy and paste. And I do it like this. Uh, no, probably that was the place. Okay. I'm doing this way. You will probably see it. Okay, see it to page views. And I got the e commerce launched for the second one. And if I look at my different variable, I should see uh, page URL, order ID, DOM element. Oh, that it has not been picked up because I'm on the wrong page. Uh, but if I go on this one and if I look at 
Ah, damn it, the page have been reloaded, so that's the reason why I cannot see it. Too bad. Uh, anyway, let's see over here if I've been lucky enough. Okay, and uh, here what we can see is that I get actually the uh, value that I wanted, right? Normally here, uh, it should have been different. So is it the case? Seems that it's not the case, but is it the order? No, this one is the SKU and this one is the order, right? You see one, three, one. So I succeed in picking it up and pushing it to Matmo thanks to the data, uh, to, thanks to the variable that I define here as tag. So if you understood what I did here, right, with the CSS selector, thanks to the source code of the page, the method which is called scrapping, you will be able actually to push any of those additional data like this as a variable within Matomo uh, Analytics. And it's going to be actually uh, published only on the page that you wanted. So in my case, the page view of the received, and that's it. And if you understand this, then uh, you understand what the e-commerce tracking code is about. Just to let you know that most of the developer won't use this technique for two main reasons. As I previously said, if the source code changed, then uh, your um, tracking code will break. And as well, because most of the developer would like to ensure that the data will be collected. And in order to ensure that the data will be properly collected, they mainly use uh, several programming languages such as PHP, and they will push over here uh, in PHP the different value and they are going to call uh, the database directly instead of scrapping uh, the page and finding out if the data is there or not. They will automatically get the data from the database. Okay, uh, I hope uh, my explanation were clear for this given video as it's uh, of course a bit uh, technical, but uh, the best uh, piece of advice I can give you is uh, try to deploy WordPress on your local server and with uh, WooCommerce is a free plugin and try to make some purchase, some fake purchase and deploy actually thanks to the tag manager, the different tracking code that you can have, but Matomo and e-commerce in particular in order to grab those data and see how your uh, Matomo's react. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and do not hesitate to make your own use case and share it with others.